Hello, this is Bridget Ra with Divine Essentials. Alright guys, so I am in the middle of some craziness. I have um, recently put out some offers that I hadn't really done in a while and I was like, oh, I'll do these offers. This won't be so difficult. It'll be easy. I can get them done quickly and I'll be like, boom, boom, boom. And then I put them out and I told people they were there. <laughs> and um, some people ordered and not only that, but they actually ordered like each of the options. So it was like I was going to do um, like these poems, right? You can either get a poem from your twin flame, like their, their divine energy, their I am presence, can write you a poem. Or you can get a poem from spirit, like what spirit has to give to you in regards to a certain area or just open to receive, whatever. Um, and then I also did one where it was like you can get messages from my message decks because I have tons of these decks that I've created that just are messages. So it's like I'll pull 20 cards, um, you know, just let me know if it's from the feminine to the masculine or the masculine or the feminine that you would like to have. And um, some people ordered all three options and some people ordered, you know, two options. Um, and so it just really piled up really quickly and got overwhelming. And now I need to break up the energy in between stuff because if not, it just like starts to run together. It's, it's hard when you're doing automatic writing. It's nice to be able to like take a break and do something that has nothing to do with what you're doing. Um, so I've been uploading a little bit more stuff while I've been trying to catch up on these. So basically we've got the past life oracle, the soul purpose oracle, and I have, um, you know, like five different piles here, but this is this is you can you know dive into all of them or you can dive into a couple of them or you can dive into one of them I'm not going to be like tallying up like what time what everything is so if somebody um, does watch all of the piles and you want to um, throw down in the comments what the timestamps are that would be greatly appreciated just so that I can get back over there quickly um, when I'm done with this and start doing my poems again and my other things and I'm not intending to do very long things, but we never know what's going to happen. So basically, um, whatever one feels appropriate to you, or whatever ones feel appropriate to you, or if all of them feel like you want to have a message from all of them, because I do intend... <clears throat> that's, what, that's another thing about pick a cards that I've been kind of like, ugh. Because if you resonate with a reader, you resonate with a reader. Um... And usually, especially when it comes to like, you know, love messages or whatever, it's like, if I'm using the same deck, and I'm using, you know, similar energies, it's, I think people can usually receive messages from more than one, you know, pile. And, and it, like, I don't know, sometimes, sometimes I feel like people too much, put too much emphasis on the whole picking of a pile part. And they don't realize that, like, you can actually get a hell of a lot more messages if you just listen to all of the messages. Um, <clears throat> but that's my opinion. That's how I feel. Um, it may be wrong. So do what you would like to do. If you want them all, take them all. If you don't, you don't have to. And I'm going to start with this one. And basically see what we got going on for you with your energies of your purpose and your past lives. Um, and if it doesn't resonate, you can always fast forward a little bit to another one, or maybe I'm just not the reader for you. So, we have the Rainforest, South America, Lightworker, Dark Entity, Earthkeeper, Divine Channel, Automatic Writing, and Shaman. Um, and I am kind of feeling like a little bit of like similarities within this energy, um, you know, connected to each other. Because the Shaman, for me, is, you know, very much like I, I do like the Muneki. Um, with the Earth Keepers, um, that's essentially what you become through the process of the Muneki, which is a shamanic tradition that has been brought to the America, like to North America from South America. Um, Alberto Velodo went and traveled down there and he collected all these um, initiations. He went to the rainforest, he went to the mountains, he went to the all these dif different places um, and to these different, you know, Quero shamans and received rites of initiation from them to deliver to others here in America and um, it helps people to step into that role of the earth keeper and to kind of protect mother earth and basically um, you know basically take stewardship for the earth and all of the beings on her 
and to be a person of power and integrity and just really get yourself into that place of like grounded and connected to Gaia um, and through the process you know there's different things there's there's the foundation rights and then there's the lineage rights and then there's the rights to come and the lineage rights have the day keepers and the wisdom keepers which is the feminine and the masculine um, and then they have the earth keepers which they are like this angelic type of energy but in in essence is what you are, you know, hoping to become through the process of the nine rites. So, some of you may have, and I find this to be true, that like the people who've come to me before um, to get the rites, it's like they, I always feel this essence or this this sense that they've already done it. They've already been there in another life. Maybe they don't remember it. They don't have any like recollection of it. But if they feel that call to come to the Muneki and to receive those energies i feel like they're they're just remembering they're just like kind of awakening something that's already in there um something that they've already done so you know that may be something about you that you don't necessarily have to resonate with the moon key but that type of energy where it's like you've already been here you've already done this work you already are a shaman you know it's like you already got that energy inside of you it says your soul carries ancient wisdom teachings so you may not need to do anything like go get rights. You may not need to do anything to be somebody here to protect Mother Earth. And that's like the Earth Keeper is, you know, the steward for the Earth. We get the feminines who take care of like the certain energies, like the, um, you know, rituals and births and deaths and um, connecting to like the stone temples and energies of like Machu Picchu. That's kind of like their thing. And then the masculine the wisdom keepers, they do like the, the mountains and, you know, they're tapping into that wisdom, stepping free of limitation of time, tasting infinity. They're a little bit different with their vibration. Um, but they have their things, you know, and then like these guys come in and they're like, oh, we're just going to do all of our thing. You know, we're not going to we're not going to worry about mountains. We're not going to worry about, um, you know, little sacred sites. We're going to do the whole shebang. Uh, so you may be kind of on that scale of like, I'm just connected to the entire earth. And you may feel a resonance, you know, um, with like the rainforest or just going into the woods and taking a nice little like walk through the, you know, um, nature, getting outside, connecting, like, um, having like a view like that would be something that would make you feel good. You'd be like, Oh, I really like that. I just want to kind of sit here and stare out there all day long because it's, it's, it's green and it's nature. You could be an earth sign. Um, but you don't have to be, but you might connect with the elements and that type of energy. And it just makes you feel peaceful. And it's like, if you're going to be a healer, you want to be a light worker, you may feel like the best way to do that is through the connection to Gaia, you know, and to channeling that connection to Gaia. You know, how am I going to bring that frequency, that energy, that stability, that love, that nurturing, you know, in the womb, in the belly of the mother? How am I going to bring that to others? How am I going to, you know, utilize the water to cleanse the emotions and the earth to you know stabilize people um, how am I gonna fire them up with their passion in the fire and you know transmute things and you probably just innately do stuff that you don't even realize that you're doing sometimes you know you may start a fire and work with the flames and you know be transmuting things and not even realize that that's what you're doing um, or you may do something to like feed yourself with flames and not even realize that that's what you're doing because like the earth keepers they you know through the process of the moon key when we get the bands of power that's to help us to feed ourselves through the through the elements but you may already do that like you may just naturally go outside or sit by a body of water and feel like that that's cleansing your emotions or you may go you know connect to the fire and feel that that's like firing you up feeling confident feeling like yeah um or, you know, the wind helping you to, like, transmute miscommunications and to um, find the way that you're going to communicate easily and effortlessly. And with the automatic writing, um, I definitely feel like you may be somebody that's more apt to write rather than, you know, speak with your voice. Um, and it says, channel through writing, decode frequency, deliver messages and teachings from spirit. So you have that ability to do this, you know, to put it onto like writing um and to deliver what the messages are from gaia from pachamama from spirit of the earth from um whoever whatever you know the great spirit or um, the creator whatever you resonate with um for your you know guides and how you connect you may be more so like i'm going to connect with like the um animal kingdom and be like i'm bringing the message of the um eagle or the condor or the whatever 
And with the divine channel, not only do you, you know, do this or have that ability to do this, <clears throat> you are a divine channel, which means <clears throat> you need this ability to do this, you know, but um, some people will only do this. Like they, they may be a divine channel, but they like their predominant thing is automatic writing. So it's like I can channel in the form of automatic writing and that's where I'm comfortable and that's where I do it and that's how I do it. Some people who are writers are automatic writing. Like they're literally delivering messages through spirit. They usually, um, you know, their writing is like prolific and it's amazing. And so, oh my God, they're such a good writer or they do such weird, awesome stuff with their writing. How do they do that? It's usually that they're tapped into spirit when they're doing those things. When we have somebody that has like these, you know, amazing gifts or whatever, um, there's like an element of them channeling, you know, through their soul and through their connection with their I am presence and, you know, bringing energy and frequency from higher dimensions into this world. And that's all that a divine channel is. It's like we take the energies and the frequencies around us and we trans form those energies and frequencies or we put a word to those energies and frequencies like for me I feel like I have a big dictionary that I've been creating over years of like okay this is Pleiadian and this is this and this is that and this means that and when I see certain things I know what the message is connected to those certain things like I see the eagle like okay that's about new perspective and rising up and it's connected to the heart chakra but whatever other energies come through with that eagle will influence the message. So if I see the eagle and then I see like something dark, or if it may be like, all right, maybe it's time for you to rise out of the darkness of your sadness. Like, um, why are you depressed, you know? Or if I see the eagle and it's like soaring up above the mountain over the, the rainforest and through the clouds into the, um, you know, the infinite, I'd be like, all right, you're rising above the storms. You're doing good. You've been able to see like from a new perspective. It, it really is just dependent upon what comes through. But by practicing, you know, you build up that understanding of what the frequencies are connected to, what they're meaning and what they, you know, um, want to be spoken as or written as and you can deliver it through the spoken word or through the written word or through your hands on healing or through dancing or through singing or through light language or however you feel guided to do it but I feel like the, those in this pile may be like innately able to do you know like a trans channel like maybe you just if you sat somewhere in a circle with people you did like a, a fire or something um, you would be like the type that could guide the people through a guided meditation with your voice if you wanted to, or you could channel a meditation onto paper and then read it to people at an event like that, you know? So I feel like you have that ability to do um, channeling, and you probably can do it with your hands as well. This is naturally awakening, magical healer, lover, galactic past life, ascended master. Um, so you've already been through the ascension process. You may be a star seed. You may be somebody that has that galactic connection. A lot of the shamans are very much connected to the earth, but they're also very much connected to the stars. Like they believe as above, so below. Like they are um, 100 percent on board with the fact that there's beings up there and there's beings down here and there's ancestors and there's like multi-dimensional things and like that that's what they do they channel and they connect with the beings and they they are like just there and willing to connect with them and see them and work with them um so you may you know feel or sense those beings <laughs> and and for some of you it may be um, something that you got to get used to over time like it may be a little bit overwhelming or you may have a tendency to get nervous or scared or whatever because it's like oh my god what the hell is this but it's like that's just because of society and conditioning and scary movies and all the things that people do to make people feel like oh I gotta just listen to you know what everybody else thinks or feels but I feel like you would have that innate ability to connect to the good and to the bad and to the all things and to realize there is duality. So this is dark entity. It says fights natural urge to embrace darkness, less life in duality of the light. So it's funny because a lot of times when I see this card, this one like follows suit. So it's like a lot of the light workers, you know, you may have had a life where you were not a light worker, where you may have a dark worker, you know, like you may have not have been so much into the light. And that's okay. That's, that's duality. It doesn't mean that you're a horrible, no good, like toxic, bad person or whatever. You may have just not have been embracing the light. You may have, you, may have, you know, just been a little kind of shitty. It's like, whatever. Um, 
and in even saying that, like, there's there's uh, there's people out there right now that like they call on the dark entities to assist them and serve them, and they they live okay lives because of that. They're like, I'm gonna call on the demon and get the demon to do this and do that and da, 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 da. and they control them and have them do like their bidding and getting their money or making people love them or whatever toxic crazy crap they're doing. Um, but they, you know, will obviously have karma as a result of that. So they come back to pay that karma, you know, in the next life. So, you know, it's a lot of people who are here probably embracing the light and like, oh, yeah, love and light, love and light. They may have been the opposite before. And that may be where some fear comes from, too, because if you're somebody that in another life kind of like, you know, diddled on the dark side in this lifetime, you may be hesitant to channel certain beings or any beings because you may be afraid of going back into the dark or you may know innately inside of you like that's it that's a thing like if I go too far if I don't protect myself or I don't if I don't keep myself in integrity this is a this is a reality that I can go down and I don't want to do that again I would like to be in the light I'd like to clear my karma I'd like to get the hell out of here and not have to come back and do this crazy shithead weird place again you know so take that if it resonates it may not it may even just be that like you are here to um, heal duality within this this collective consciousness and frequencies and energies that we have like you're here to um, counteract the darkness you're here to bring light into the shadow but again shamans are usually the ones that are like they're pretty much you know well grounded and well rounded and they understand that like where there's light there's dark and where there's up there's down and sometimes life is going to be really good and sometimes life is going to fucking suck and the shaman usually gets to be the shaman because of the suffering that they've endured and then they don't just go through one cycle of like death it's like they just continuously go through these cycles of like death and rebirth and shedding the ego because every time you go through something torturous and tremendous and horrible and heart-wrenching it makes you you know check that part of yourself a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more and get rid of the parts of ourselves that aren't really aligned on a soul level so you know the shaman goes through some big ass tests and some difficulties but it makes them a better person and a better soul in the end and they know that and, like they embrace it you know it's not like they're they're like asking for it they're not like yeah send me another round of horrible but they navigate it and they respect it and they understand it um and they're not a victim of it you know they're not going to be like oh my god why is it so bad why did everything happen to me they just they know they get it so that may be you and um, you probably do good with all of the things that you have to go through. So we're going to go to the next one here and see what comes through. Oh, goodness. You've got the slave, the galactic war, the warrior, and then resentment, which makes sense because um, if you were a slave or, or a warrior, you might have a little bit of resentment about that. Um, you know, and if you're in the galactic war, that's a difficulty time. So I'm feeling like whoever in this pile, because you get the remover of obstacles, you're here to overcome and grow. The seer with the eyes of, that see beyond illusion in your lived experiences are unique and meaningful. Share your stories with others. So I feel like you've had some crazy shit that, that's happened. Maybe not in this lifetime specifically, um, but you've definitely been through some stuff, you know. And if you were in the galactic war, <clears throat> you may have a longing for home. But knowing that home doesn't exist, so that can leave that resentment there. You know, it's like, um, if you're Lyran, right? Lyra was destroyed in the Galactic War way, 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 way back in the beginning. And everything that's been playing out since then is kind of like a repeat of that. It's like, oh, Atlantis was a repeat. What's happening here is kind of a repeat. It's like, um, we keep screwing up over power and, you know, ego and separation and, you know, resentment and just not letting ourselves embrace things <clears throat> in a balanced way or we get, like, you know, weird about about slaves and all of that like th this planet literally has a bunch of slaves on it right now like you are a slave but you're just like doo -doo -doo, i don't realize it because the way that they do it now isn't so in your face you don't have the chains on you but <clears throat> it's kind of i don't know like it's like if you see it you freaking see it and i'm sure that most of you in this pile are aware of it like you realize like where you're not allowed to be free so you're a freedom fighter <clears throat> or you may protest injustice you may not be so much for yourself but for other people you may step up to the plate like like i'm a taurus so if i see injustice like coming after my sister or somebody else i'm i'm more apt to go be like blah, 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 blah. but if it's towards me i'm like eh, i can take it you know like i i let it 
fester a little bit longer, hold on to that resentment, you know, I might not like it, but I don't do anything about it until it like builds to the point where it's like, Whoa. usually that then it's too late. And that's just a big, huge blow up that gets really bad. Um, but I feel like that may be something that you do too, is like you may hold on to this resentment from like, you know, past and it may just build and build and build and build. And then you may have those times where you just blow and explode and blah, 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 crazy. Or you may get, you know, triggered by this sense of like, uh, earth is a slave system. Um, you may have a hard time settling into jobs or relationships. It's like, you don't stay too long because you don't want to become a slave of that system. You don't want to be a slave of a lover. You don't want to be a slave of a job. Like you don't want a boss telling you what to do. You don't want anybody telling you what to do. You don't want the government telling you what to do. You'd be probably the type that would be like, you know what? I ain't going to do it just because you want me to. And when you tell me we don't have to do that anymore, I'm probably going to do it because now I want to do it. You know, it's like, um, always the little bit of an opposite thing. There, that warrior, fighter of wars and battles, always on defense, fights for beliefs, imbalances, remain from battle. So you may be on guard a little bit. And you may not be like a horrible person about it. Like I definitely have this energy. Um, but I'm not like combative with everybody I meet and I don't, you know, um go looking for fights. But I definitely feel that type of energy where it's like I'm not gonna do it until like if like the best way to get me to do something is telling me I can't do it or that I won't do it or that I like you know like criticize me in some way and I'll fucking show you basically is is like the thing inside of me that gets me like all fired up I feel like that may be with the same for you it's like you don't really give a shit until somebody like says something in a certain way it's like that reverse psychology gets to you probably a little bit easier than you know just flat out saying something to you or requesting something of you is probably not the best way to go about it because you're not going to want to be the slave system you're independent you're the warrior you're the fighter um and you may have that sense of sadness just knowing that like that home doesn't exist the way that it was you know um and in this in the same sense it's like it does and it doesn't because if you you know look at time and everything here it's like everything is expanding so like the the reality or the timeline where um lyra is is existing and good and never had that war it was never destroyed it does exist out there in the ethers it's out there in the consciousness somewhere but you're on a timeline right now that aligns with the frequencies and energies and reality that it's not there that it was destroyed in the war but even in that sense you could go back all the way back to the time where it was there before the war so we have a lot of like um things that are multi-dimensional and we're able to do when we stop living in limitation of but that but it was destroyed you know it's like yeah it was destroyed in one version of events but those version of events aren't the only version of events and they happened at one point in time if you go beyond there, here it is, it's still there, and it's heyday, you can go right back to where it was, and now it is in its heyday, and it's goodness, that's what astral traveling does for you, it allows you to see that shit, and to be like, oh my god, there's Lyra, and it's beautiful, and it's amazing, like, think about your dreams, like, you have these crazy elaborate dreams, right, like, you're going somewhere, you're connecting to something, and you're, you know, ending up where you need to be and I always say this thing where it's like if you think about it like whatever you think about whatever you come up with in your mind because you've thought it it now exists somewhere in some way you know it's like you had that idea you had that that thing in your brain and now it exists because you created it you just created it within your mind within your consciousness and with the frequencies and energies and now it's there somewhere you know, it may not be here in your physical realm, but it's somewhere. It exists. Like, you saw it. You know it. You understand it. Like, this is what you're thinking about. Well, now it is existing somewhere in the worlds of worlds. And I had some crazy experience, like, last week because there was this guy who does, like, like you know, he makes these, like, elaborate videos connected to space and time and um deep space exploration and you know they do like this scientific stuff where they're like literally like watching stuff go down in the universe and um he was talking about time crystals and and it was like it proved my theory it was like this dude was like talking about you know all these different crystals and basically what crystals are is like mo molecules and elements and atoms and whatever and they grow in a pattern 
and that pattern is sacred geometric. So it's like, I'm going to grow in an octahedron, and because, because of that, it's like repeated over and over and over. That's how you get a crystal that looks the way that it looks. But at, at some point, it stops repeating the pattern, or, you, or it would never end, okay? So at some point, it's like the pattern gets messed up, and that's how you get a crystal that looks like this. Now, I don't know exactly like all the concept and understanding behind it, but basically there was a scientist that was like, well, in theory then time crystals should exist because they're saying like this exists and that exists like this you know um like like sand at its molecular structure is a crystal or this at it like water water is it like everything literally gets down into these crystal energies basically everything is made up of it here on this planet and like within the universe like, like hydrogen oxygen like uh, there's all different types of things that are created and they're all different forms of this ex this existence. So he was saying like time crystal should be a, should be a thing because you know like it's another it's another form or it's another thing of measurement or whatever. And then like within a very short time, somebody freaking was able to measure and like you know document something that is now considered a time crystal. And basically, all it was was that they slowed down. Um, something really, really, really slow with this computerized camera that was, like, able to see things on a very, very small scale, and it was going, you know, um, at a certain speed and whatever, but they made a pattern out of the time, so it was like, um, you know, it was like, it was like, but by, by doing that, like, however they did it, it was like measuring the time, it was making the time crystal, it was like that was the pattern of the time, I don't know. However the hell the guys explained it, I'll see if I can find the video and put it into the description box for you, so you can go watch it and he can explain it to you better than I can. But basically, somebody came up with the idea of time crystals, and within a very freaking short time, they had it in a freaking lab, proving its existence. And that's what I mean. Like, we do that, and we see that time and time again with how, like, that stuff is, where they're like, oh, yeah, you know, um, if they split an atom, and they put one half of the atom over here and one half of the atom over here, and they're like, bing, to that one, that one reacts, and, but that one might not make a move until they looked at it, because it doesn't, like, things don't move until you're looking at them, like, things bounce off of like your focus on it is like our our attention is what makes a lot of things happen our consciousness is what's creating these things that are that are playing out and rippling around and you know doing what they're doing and it's like it's on such a huge scale it's such a like complicated thing but it's really not at the same time but if you can wrap your mind around it and like realize it's like literally everything here is available everything here is infinite and it's expansive and it's like at the same time it's not there it's you creating it based off of your awareness of it or you looking at it if you didn't look at it, it wouldn't be there but because you're looking at it there it is and you can manipulate it you can change it you can make it do whatever you want it to do but you gotta believe that and you gotta like you know try so you may have the eyes that can see beyond that stuff, you know, or you may be somebody that's going to start to um, break out of, like, the lower vibrational energies here. You're here to overcome and grow. Um, chanting and channeling with your voice is going to eliminate suffering and heal blockages for yourself and others. So whatever blocks there have been, whatever crap has been created, you're here to overcome that. You're here to grow. You're here to release those resentments. You're here to tap back into that infinite ability to see, to dream, to perceive, to create a new thing, a new existence, and to not get stuck in those limitations or ooh boo hoo hoo, you know, um, try to like wrap your mind around some of those concepts or utilize those concepts in a way of like, um, you know, expanding your mind and expanding your understanding and realizing like there's nothing is gone, nothing is missing, you are still, you know, um, just as intricately connected to your home as you once were and you can see it and become it and you know bring it back into existence right now and then you know share your stories with others whatever your stories you feel like you're guided to do or um you know express to others make sure you do it because there's a reason for you to do that all right and we're going to move on here for the next pile um all right so you got starseed soul peacemaker young at heart soulmate um and then we have ascended starseed again the wave maker and the free spirit so 
With this energy here, obviously we've got some star seeds, um, which I'm not surprised about because I know a lot of people who follow me are star seeds. So basically, you're here to awaken and shift the collective consciousness. That's what the star seeds are here for. Um, and you may be somebody that's on a divine, like love connection because in in like the simplest form divine masculine divine feminine divine you know beings divine energies embodying like those roles of divine um is is doing the same thing it's awakening and shifting the collective consciousness by embodying the appropriate energies that they need to be in to do what they came to do okay so i feel like you're probably somebody that is a star seed, but you're probably also somebody that has a soul mate or somebody that is going to push you to become a better version of yourself. It says you're here to, you know, enjoy life and to love freely. So um, this is effortless love, partnership, codependency. This can only go so far, heal and grow. So I feel like this is pushing you to grow, okay? Um, you know, star seeds who are here to do all of this, like you're gonna come in with stuff. Like you, ha you agreed to help with the Earth's ascension but you have to go through something to ascend, right? So like you're going to come in and you might have some codependency issues to deal with or some um, toxic ways of being to deal with. Uh, you may be, you know, one of you is a little bit young at heart, a little bit goofy, a little bit immature. You could have passed on at a young age in another life. But regardless, in this life, you're here to, you know, um, embrace that part of you, like to bring joy, to bring love, to enjoy life, to enjoy love without the codependency. So that may be the main thing that you're here to heal. You could be um, like one of the divine feminines that's like a very much like in that chaser energy at one point. You may not be right now, but you could have been at one point. And that's basically somebody that's very codependent and like, love me, love me, love me, don't, don't ignore me, oh my god, bleh. craziness. But as you heal that, as you grow, as you overcome that part of you and you give somebody else the freedom to love and enjoy that love freely, you know, you'll, you'll be helping the collective consciousness to shift out of that too. So you'll come in with a wound or a problem or an issue and as you heal that and as you ascend through that and as you awaken and understand, like, I'm not going to do that anymore, I'm going to, you know, heal and grow it ripples into the collective consciousness to other people or other souls that are navigating that type of experience and it helps them to do the same. So it says an emotional cleansing current of love is flowing through you. So it's like whatever you do in regards to your love situation, whatever you do in regards to loving of yourself, whatever you do with your consciousness and your um, ascension process on this planet is you know rippling out and echoing out into the you know halls of consciousness and assisting other beings to do the same. And you may be a peacemaker, it says a voice conflict, afraid of physical conflict. So you could have been murdered at some point, you know, maybe that's why you died young in another life. Uh, somebody could have hurt you or murdered you and you never got to really be that free spirit. You know, maybe you didn't get to live your life as a child. So again, that would be something that's a big emotional thing to clear and heal. And that may bring about codependency in somebody because they could be afraid of losing people because of what happened in another life. If you were very young when you died, when you come into this lifetime, you may feel like scared, you know, like, oh my God, I'm going to die. Or like, um, you may never grow up because you didn't get to be the child in that last life. So you may be like kind of goofy, a little bit immature in this life, or whoever you're dealing with may be in that role. They may be immature. They may be young at heart, but it may be because they didn't get to be a child before. So this is that opportunity for them to do that. And, you know, be that child that, that was taken from them in another life. And by going through that process, they're cleansing themselves. They're, you know, allowing that love to flow through them. And as long as they can heal the codependency crap, and as long as they can, you know, allow themselves to grow up and ascend and awaken and, you know, heal a little bit, you know, they'll do what they're meant to do. But that doesn't mean that they have to let go of being young at heart or uh, being the peacemaker or anything like that. It's just like integrating, understanding, cleansing, and releasing things. So this could be like that moment for you, like that aha moment of like, oh my God, like that's why I feel like so like, oh my God. Or, like maybe you have a hard time like releasing one of your parents. You know, codependency doesn't have to be just a romantic thing. You could be very codependent on your parents. Your parents could be very codependent on you. Um, you could be codependent with a friend, family member. It can be drug-related. It can be alcohol. It can be um, even, like, religion. Like, you could start to, like, fall on something a little bit too much and be like, oh, my God, blah, 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 crazy about it. Whatever it is, you know, try to make peace with it. Try to um, embrace that youngness inside of you, but allow yourself to grow up, you know. Allow yourself to feel safe, secure, and capable of awakening and shifting the energies that you've once been through and this know that you've signed up to this life 
and you have major obstacles to rise up through um, through your healing and ascending process and anchoring high vibing energy on earth and you know the the star seed souls like they have a different frequency and energy anyways they are the peacemakers they are a little bit young at heart like they do have like this um almost like a theoric type of energy sometimes depending on where they're from like you could be like a um fey like type of being or energy that's just kind of like ding, 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 and this is your energy like it doesn't matter but um you may just embody that energy anyways because of being a star seed and you know you may just need to embrace that and allow that to be who you are and not you know shy away from that part of yourself like embrace who you are own it you know put it out there but also stand confidently on your own within it don't feel like you need to um have other people be like oh let me back you up and let me help you through this or let me you know hold your hand your whole way through you need to be <clears throat> your own partner you know your own um person that's going to be like i i am who i am and i'm happy with who i am and i'm confident in who i am and i'm shifting and i'm awakening and i'm ascending and i'm free to express who i want to be and i'm happy you know cleansing myself and releasing all of the crap that i've been through and you know as a result of all of that you probably will make peace with a lot of things that you um otherwise maybe not have been able to do you know or things that were holding on too much so Hopefully that made sense for you guys, and I'm going to move on to the next one here. So we have Divine Feminine, Honoring the Ways of the Sacred Feminine, Sacred Feminine, Cycles of Rebirth, Tarot and Oracle Card Readers, Intuitive Readings Help Support You and Others with a Wisdom Writer, Your Words, Hold Wisdom and Light Codes, Share Them with the World, and You Have Committed to a Sacred Union. Um, and then we have Orphan, which says, never feels like you belong. You may be the black sheep of the family, um, or you could find home within self. You need to find home within self-acceptance. We also have India and Witcher Warlock, okay? So I feel like those of you in this pile, um, you definitely could have Divine Feminine. Like, you may be a Divine Feminine, or you could be somebody that needs to embrace that Divine Feminine energy more so in this life. Or you may have a Divine Feminine that you're committed to become aligned with and unite with in this lifetime, okay? So it's like you've committed to a sacred union with a Divine Feminine, or you are a Divine Feminine that's committed to a sacred union with, you know, probably a Divine Masculine. Um, in sex doesn't matter. It could be however it's showing up. Sometimes those energies are reversed in people. Um, just take it as it feels appropriate for you. But I definitely feel like this energy of cycles of rebirth are important. So you may need to go through a rebirth process in this life a couple of times or just in regards to one thing or a couple of things or whatever things. But <clears throat> there may be some stuff that needs to kind of cycle through within your connection with somebody else or just within your own connection to yourself or in regards to like this orphaned energy. Um, like you may need to release this feeling of being orphaned or that black sheep, you know, um, and accept yourself. Like you may be, you may be feeling like, oh, nobody cares, nobody loves you, blah, blah, blah. but it may be more so that um, this is how you feel about yourself. So because of that, you perceive other people to be like not accepting you, or you perceive your parents to like be disowning you, and at this, it, and that's really not the case. It's more so just like your insecurities and doubts coming up to the surface, and that may be your own shit to heal. Because we also have connect to earth, natural healer, murdered for the lifestyle, afraid to express self. So if you were a witch or a warlock on this planet at another point. Um, that's going to make you feel orphaned as well to be murdered for who you were like maybe you practice magic maybe you were the divine feminine doing those sacred rituals and that healing and you know doing whatever you could have been somebody that played with the tarot um, or you could have been somebody that was like that you know doing automatic writing or um, had like a book of shadows or whatever and even here it says scribe a natural ability to express through writing automatic writing brings answers so you could be somebody that does automatic writing you could have had that witch you know witchy book of spells and all of that but that may be something that got you in trouble and because of that you know now you feel like like that orphan almost like like people chastised you they killed you for who that who you were so obviously you're going to have a hard time embodying that or em embracing that and that may show up in a family dynamic where you're like oh don't like me they don't love me and they do they just you you just don't think they do because you have this like natural thing inside of you that's like ah 
ah, I'm no good. I'm bad. And this is bad. And that's bad. And it's going to get me in trouble. So I need to go through a rebirth, commit to myself and commit to my sacred union. Because sometimes the sacred union is more so just about, you know, uniting with who you are at your soul level and releasing the fears and the doubts, the insecurities, like whatever's already happened and stop being that orphan. Like stop putting yourself out into the cold. Like you may be um, feeling like an orphan as a result of your own perspective or your own, like, I'm going to, like, abandon you. I'm not going to own who I am. I'm not going to, you know, speak what I want to speak. I'm not going to do what I want to do. I'm not going to, you know, um, honor that thing inside of me that naturally, innately, you know, wants to be expressed. So go through that way of having that rebirth. Commit to yourself first and foremost and nurture yourself. Love yourself. Mother yourself. Be the divine feminine and, you know, like, put yourself into the womb and see yourself as that child um, and just, like, love that inner child, you know, give that child that voice that maybe hasn't been spoken because of whatever, you know, fears or doubts you've had. Um, you could have also been in India at some point, or India could be significant to you. Um, and with the wisdom writer and the, the scribe, I definitely feel like you are somebody that's meant to write, okay? Or you may be somebody that's meant to channel messages for either yourself or for others, um, but, you know, it's like automatic writing is going to bring you answers and your words hold light codes. So you want to share them with the world in any way that's, you, you know, that makes sense. Like you can write for other people. You can write, you know, articles and submit them. You can make a blog. You could write um, like a book of shadows, like to, you know, get, share with other people. Like however it feels appropriate for you to do. But I definitely would, you know, embrace this gift and also ask yourself the questions that you may be wanting to have answers given to you. Um, to clear up things, you know, like, where is my sacred union, or how can I go through this rebirth, or um, how can I express myself in a way that makes me feel safe, or how can I make myself feel more inclusive, or how can I heal this orphan, you know, energy that I've, like, brought about within myself, or how can I embrace, you know, um, other life styles that I've lived, or other lifetimes, and, you know, do whatever feels right to do and how you want to do it. And intuitive readings help support you and others. Now, this can be that, like, you getting an intuitive reading can help support you and others. Um, or you delivering the intuitive reading can help support others. And you can do intuitive reading through the Tower Oracle. Or you can do it as the scribe, you know, with the wisdom words. Like, you could literally um, do automatic writing readings. Like, I do that for people. I, like, right now I'm doing the poems. So you could do the poem way. Or you could do, um, like, you ask questions and you get the answers for those people. So, like... Sometimes people will submit to me, you know, four or five questions and I get the messages from spirit. Sometimes it's about their soul origin or it's about like what their divine masculine feels or it's about, you know, who they were in another life. Um, whatever it is, is usually, you know, spirit just comes through and, and delivers through the form of writing. Um, another way that I do too with automatic writing is like if I feel like I like it's dependent, you know, it's always different. But sometimes like if I'm if I know I'm going to be sitting down for a particular person, I will go pull cards and I'm like, OK, show me the cards that I need for this situation. And I might get, you know, Lady Portia, divine order, do what you feel is right. An important lesson is unfolding and then increased awareness, deep connection, trust your inner voice. So like that may be a message that I, you know, is meant to be brought through through the form of automatic writing. Um, and by me connecting to these messages or, you know, connecting to these two guides, I can be like, okay, like, uh, Lady Portia and Master Buddha have come through to deliver this message to you. But as soon as I start writing that, it takes off and it's like, blah, 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 you know, more and more pages come as a result of just me triggering these little like messages here, you know, um, it's like that gateway opens up and it, it just continues. So if you ever feel stuck or something, um, you can use cards to kind of trigger the messages and, and you can do that in your own way. Um, yeah, it's like your internal um, guidance system is coming through loud and clear. However you feel guided to do it. There's no wrong way to do automatic writing. There's no wrong way to do um, card readings. There's no wrong way to be intuitive and to utilize your gifts. As long as the messages you deliver to people are supportive and helping them, then you don't really have to worry too much. Um, so you may be somebody that's going to do some intuitive readings with tarot and oracle cards. And it may not even necessarily be the way you would expect it to be or the way you thought it was going to be, you know, or maybe you already do those readings and it's going to evolve and, you know, you need to pick up the book and get some channeled um, writing done to see where that goes and evolves over time. So I'm going to move on to the last one here and we have 
ancient Greece, ancient Rome, accident, afraid to travel in the vehicle, car, trucks, death by collision, passion, intense passion, begin another life, firekeeper, phoenix, creator of sacred transformation, starkeeper, guardian of the galaxy, keeper of the stars, fire in my vein, fearlessness in my heart, and divine masculine, honoring sacred masculinity and power, clarity and confidence, and high priestess, trust your inner knowing, share your sacred feminine essence. So, um, I feel like many of you probably are either the high priestess with the divine masculine here, or you are the divine masculine with a high priestess as your divine counterpart here. Um, and you may have this very intense passion that began with each other in another lifetime. Um, I feel like this passion is like fire, okay? And it's like you guys bring that fire through each other. It's like that sacred transformation may come about by connecting with each other. Um, they may, you know, initiate this high priestess energy or this essence that you have inside of you by the passion that you share. It's like every time you see them or connect with them or think of them, it's like you get another um, quotient of light or transformational energies that push you forward to have that fearlessness inside of you, to have that clarity and that confidence of the masculine, you know, because like you can embody masculine or feminine regardless of your sex, but I feel like... Um, you guys are able to like almost channel each other through sexual connection um like sex magic or just through passion and desire it's like you guys can you utilize that energy almost as like a fire it's like a sacred fire that runs through you and into each other to continue to bringing that clarity and that confidence to each other through the connection and you may not even have to be near them for it to happen it's like this began in another life and it just continues to grow and it continues to um you know rise through you now with this it says afraid to travel in a vehicle car or truck death by collision this may be how you feel or they how they feel or this may be something that is like this may be even something that comes through about in your connection it's like you guys may be afraid of each other because of the intensity you know maybe the two of you came together and there was like a big catastrophe that came about because of it the pat the fire the heat the passion that the two of you shared could have burnt down an entire city or there could have started like some raging war um or the person that you were connected to you may have lost them in a fire or you may have lost them in you know some accident you know if you think about this time these ancient times obviously a car isn't you know driving around back then but like they could have been in one of those chariots or something and that could have led to an accident so you may have a tendency to get nervous or um you know like want to be the one in control of a vehicle i'm very very bad um at being a passenger like i'm like oh my God, uh, 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 uh. like I, I freak out the whole time um depending on who's driving there's some people that i'm okay with um but there's a majority i'm like uh, uh, uh. <laughs> like I can't help it. So you may have that, and that may be something that's, you know, coming from another lifetime that there was an accident. For some of you, it could be, you know, specifically within a car or truck, but I do feel for some of you, it's connected to this. And it may have been, you know, ignited by the passion that you had. Like they were trying to rush back to get to you because they were like, I want to get back to my bitch. And boom, they didn't make it. So now you could be like afraid of that, you know, and not even realize it. Because we're no, we aren't usually conscious of these things um, in these lifetimes that we're living. We're like, why do I feel this way about vehicles? We don't really think back and be like, oh, you know, it's that time that, you know, he, he was riding around in his chariot and the horse took off and went the wrong way. And he was in a rush to come get busy and boom, he died. You know, like we we don't know so I feel like something like that along those lines may have been you know leading into things that could have been difficult and so now as a result of these accidents or whatever happened between the two of you in another life you may fire each other up you may have all this passion all this desire all this drive um but you may not get to really like embody it all the way or embrace it all the way because there's a fear of doing so like if you you may not even know it they may not know it but it's like they're afraid to embrace you they're afraid to um really allow that fire into themselves because they don't want it to be lost they don't want it to burn out they don't want you to die if you're maybe you were the one that died you could they could have lost you in a fire and um they couldn't get to you in time maybe they were off at war or they were doing whatever as like a you know like i'm oh a god in the middle of the freaking place drinking my wine or doing whatever and they could have lost you um, to the flames or to the to whatever. And like a lot of the um, ancient Greece, they get immortalized in the stars. Um, like Pleiades is seven sisters from from the Greece time. And it's like um, you know, 
all the all the different names of the daughters and the daughters were being chased after Orion and it's like it's just it's all connected and it's all plays out but there's all these reasons like he was chasing after him they didn't want her to get him so we put him up in the stars to keep him safe and there's so many others like that where it's like that type of story plays out so just know that there may be something connected to like who you are on a soul level that's more so like on a star level like you may be like the incarnate here but your soul may also be one of the seven sisters of the Pleiades or Sirius or Isis or um, Osiris and like that situation that's immortalized in the stars so um, you know follow your intuition follow what feels appropriate to you share your sacred feminine essence and trust your inner knowing because your inner knowing is going to know it your inner knowing is going to feel that calling to the particular star that is aligned to you and you're going to feel like you have that in your energy that that fire of the stars is going to be in your veins the fearlessness in your heart because you are it you are the embodiment of whatever that is you know and it started way back in the day with your dude you know far back in the time um, but now maybe the opportunity for you to honor your sacred feminine and your sacred masculine. Look at this sacred feminine essence, sacred masculine essence. The two of you need to honor who you are in this lifetime and not allow that passion to die out or be like afraid to embrace it just because of what's happened before. Um, and then rise through the ashes as the Phoenix and have that sacred transformation in this lifetime. So hopefully that has assisted you guys. Thank you very much. In Namaste.